Hello everyone, welcome. This is Farmer Cop here. We're going to go over today everything you need to know about growing grains in Farming Simulator 19. We're going to go over growing wheat, barley, canola, soybeans, and oats today. So uh, if this is what you're looking for, go ahead and stay tuned. So today we're going to go over, as I explained already, we're going to go over wheat, barley, oats, canola, and finally soybeans. And in this video we're going to cover the different things you have to do uh, to prepare a harvest of some form of grain uh, in Farming Simulator 19. That includes plowing, or maybe subsoiling, or maybe all you have to do on your field is cultivate. We'll talk about seeding. And we'll even talk about using one of these, a direct seed drill. And we'll talk about fertilizing your fields with either one of these, or you could use one of these as well. And we'll talk briefly about using lime and spreading lime. And of course, we'll talk about harvesting the crop and what to do with it after you do harvest it. All right, now that we went over kind of the basic steps in that intro about what different things we have to do to grow and produce grain or that style of crops in Farming Simulator, we're going to go over uh, some of the equipment we're going to need. So I've already selected a field that we are going to go ahead and do this on. So I'll move over to that in the map real quick. All right, so I've selected field two here. The reason being it needs both lime on it and it needs to be plowed as well. So it has both those requirements on there. Currently there's sugar beets growing in that field. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of those and put in a new crop for us. So field two is what we're gonna drive over and work on here in just a bit. All right, so what we're gonna do real quick before we head over there to field two is we're gonna go over the equipment we're gonna use and I have all that here lined up. So starting off, we either have the option to use a plow or a subsoiler because if you remember my video on cultivators and preparing your fields, you can use either one of these to satisfy the plowing requirement. I'm actually going to use a subsoiler because I just prefer that. So we're going to use a subsoiler there, and that'll satisfy that plowing requirement. And since we are going to subsoil that, if you also remember in my cultivator video, we don't have to plow as well, or cultivate, excuse me, as well. So we're just going to subsoil, and we're actually not going to bring these two pieces of equipment. So we'll let that do all the work this time. But I put them here because there are uh, other options that are often used. Moving on from there. Um, we're going to use this cedar here to go ahead and plant our wheat. So this is not a direct drill. Uh, direct drill um, would make it so we wouldn't have to cultivate. However, we'd still have to plow if plowing was required. So since this field needs plowing anyways, we're just going to use this cedar here since we don't need a direct drill. Um, so this is going to be loaded up. And we're actually going to plant all five of the crops I talked about in the intro. So that's going to be wheat, barley, oats, canola, and soybeans. And so after we get the, the crop planted on the field, since that field does require lime, we're going to use this here bridle uh, a fertilizer spreader, which can also spread lime. So we're going to use this to spread lime on the field. And then we're going to use this guy to fertilize the fields. And I'm going to bring a second one over there just in case we have any weeds pop up. And I'll go over more about weeding and the different things you can do to weed fields in a different video. Um, so... This is just going to cover if we have to use a sprayer function. Obviously, there's other ways to weed early on and other different pieces of equipment for it. But for today, we're just going to use this. And continuing on, here's the harvester we're going to use. This is a Massey Ferguson. So we're going to go ahead and harvest all five of our different types of crops with this guy. And this is the style of header that will work on all of them. So this is a threshing header here or a grain header. So that's what's going to work on all of the crops that we're planting today. And that's why they're all kind of summed up in this vehicle is because they all... Um, are produced in the very same way. And then we have this guy, which is going to help us haul our crops either to storage or to a store to sell them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get all this stuff over to that field, and I'll be right back with you. All right, so here we are over at field two. So again, you can see it's got sugar beets growing in it. So I'm going to go ahead and hire a worker to get this guy subsoil in here. All right, there he goes. All right, and we'll also look. So if you if we go into our map here, you can see as we go, that little sliver there where he's it's slowly removing the plowing requirement. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and let him work, and then I'll see you guys at the end. All right, and as you can see here, he's continuing to plow or subsoil the field. Um, you can see we have this whole section here already done. Um, so if we look at that, um, he's going to continue on. So what I'm going to do actually to save us some time while he's working is I'm going to go ahead and get us started with uh, planting in the field since now that this section is going to be planted on, we can go ahead and get that rolled. All right, here we are with the cedar. So I have it set at wheat right now. Um, however, I am going to do all 
uh, five of the crops we talked about. So wheat, barley, canola, uh, soybeans, and oats. So I'm going to do, I think, wheat, then barley, then oats, and then I'll do canola and soybeans. I think I'll probably just do maybe six rows each with this planter, and I'll leave a little gap in between each one. So I'm going to go ahead and hire a worker here to get him going. Oh, there you can see he's starting to plant the field there. So I'll get him going, and then I'll be right back with you after we get this field all finished up subsoil and get it planted. All right, there you can see we got five sections planted. So over on the far right there, that's going to be uh, wheat, and then we have barley, and oats, and we have canola, and then lastly we have soybeans. So a little bit of a big chunk here that uh, didn't quite work out, but I put a break in between each one so we can kind of see the difference as they're all growing up. But, yep, so just ignore that chunk at the end. And in case you're curious, this uh, little cedar here, um, it was able to do all that on one tank. Uh, if you don't know, you just hit Y on PC to adjust what seed you're planting. So if you can see down there, I'm changing the seed. So uh, we started with wheat here, barley, uh, oats, then went to canola, then soy. Uh, this can also plant oilseed radish, and um, it can also plant grass as well. But those aren't what we're talking about today, so we're not going to worry about those. And if you notice, it's at 37%, started out full, and I didn't refill it at all. So this thing actually can plant a fair, fair amount of space here uh, really easily. Uh, also, we're going to jump in and look at the map here real quick. So here's field two. So if we go um, to plowing, you can see that now that we've gotten all the way through with the sub so there, it does not have the red requirement saying it needs plowing anymore. So that is good news. Uh, fertilizer state, it actually already has one on there. So we're going to add a second one here in a little bit with our liquid fertilizer. Uh, we're also going to look here at lime. So the next thing we're going to do is actually add lime. So this is lime required. So we're going to get rid of that requirement next. All right, so here we are here. We got our uh, lime spreader all set up, loaded down there with 9,000 liters of lime. I don't know why it says it's at 99%. It is, it is full. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, so we'll go ahead and spread lime. You can actually spread lime um, when it's at this state before anything's popped up. And you can also spread it in that first couple of stages when there's just a little bit popped up on the field. So either way will work. Uh, to get you the advantage of liming it. So I'll go ahead and get a worker started here. Our worker, and it should be spreading perfect. And also, too, to note with uh, the fertilizer spreaders that also they do lime and fertilizer. Um, the solid fertilizer will spread a lot farther than the lime, so lime doesn't uh, spread as far. And if you notice down the right-hand corner, uh, it does deplete rather rapidly. So we'll see if I have to fill it up or not, if we can make it through the whole field. Um, so I'll let them keep working, and then I'll be right back with you. All right, as you can see, we finished lime in the field, so um, won't render that far, but we have our field lime. So we're going to go ahead and wait until it gets into the first growth stage, and then we're going to add a layer of fertilizer. Uh, you could add the layer now, just over top of the lime, um, but we're just going to wait so I can show you that you can do it in both stages. Now, if you if it didn't have a fertilizer state already on it, what you could do is add one now and then wait until it gets to the first growth stage and then add one. And then you wouldn't have to worry about having narrow tires or anything like that and worry about uh, destroying your crops if you have crop destruction on. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, actually what we'll do right now is let's look at the map. Okay, so as you can see, it no longer has that lime requirement on it. So like field four here has lime required still on it and ours no longer needs it. So also does not need plowing or lime. So um, and it's fertilized for one state. So we'll leave it on this because what we're going to do is add the second state to get that dark blue that we're looking for there. So all right, I'll go ahead and get the fertilizer set up and be right back with you. All right, so as you can see here, I let it get through to the next growth stage. Um, so you can see that all five of our crops here are at the first growth stage where they're just starting to pop up. So it got rid of that lime on the field or at least that animation for it there. You can see still where we didn't have a crop planted, um, it still has that lime line on there. And that'll go away after we fertilize. So here I have the fertilizer. We'll go ahead and hire someone to get this going. All right, and there they go. Um, I will let them work and then I'll be back with you when they're done. All right, as you can see, we've gotten them all fertilized and finished up. So we'll just hang out and see if we need to use any uh, herbicide on the field, if we have any weeds pop up. So I will see you until the next thing we have to do to keep this crop growing. All right, so it does look like some weeds started to pop up. So we're going to go ahead and grab our uh, fertilizer spreader with herbicide in it and go ahead and give the field a spray just to take care of that. So if we also pop in here to our map, you can see that um, in our five crops here you can look over here and see that weeds are turned on so you can see that these do have weeds in them and also if you look at the field info indicator down at the bottom right hand corner it says weeds are at a hundred percent so we'll go ahead and grab the weed sprayer or the herbicide sprayer and we'll go ahead and give these guys a spray to get rid of them 
All right, we've got our uh, sprayer here filled with herbicides. So we'll go ahead and let this guy, our worker, and let this guy run on the field. So if we hop out here, you can see that as it runs, those weeds are going from green to brown. Oh, and you're kidding that they're getting killed. So we'll let him work, and then I'll be right back with you guys when he's done. All right, guys, so our worker has finished. He sprayed the whole field, so the weeds are brown and dead throughout the whole field, so we don't have to worry about them anymore. If you look down at the field info in the bottom right-hand corner, it shows weeds are at 0%, which is great. If we go in and look at the map, weeds are selected on. Uh, so you can see that down here, four and five have weeds, in part of them at least. But our field is now weed-free, so no need to worry about those anymore. So I don't think we'll have any other issues or anything we have to do until we... Uh, get these guys all ready to harvest so i'll go ahead and check back with you if we got anything we need to do or if it's time to harvest see you then all right so they're all ready to harvest now it is 4 25 in the morning so what i am going to do is we're going to go ahead and wait until it is light out so i'll probably come back to you around 8 a.m and then we'll actually harvest where we can see what we're doing but if you look in here quickly at the map it shows in here that it's all ready to harvest we didn't have any issue any other issues with weeds as we went so nothing to worry about there we only had to deal, deal with that once so go back here to our actually it's pretty cool to see the fruit types you can see our different rows of different fruits there so uh, but going back here no weeds it's double fertilized doesn't need plowing and does not need lime so all right so i'll go ahead and fast forward and i'll get you guys back here when we're going to get ready to harvest all right welcome back it is 8 a.m as promised and we have this beautiful golden grains to harvest here so what i'll do is i'm going to use this massey ferguson harvester here um, and i'm going to go over each one and then i'll show you at the end uh, how much we got out of each one just in case you're curious though it's not really the this isn't really a vi uh, video about yields or anything like that but still i'd be curious to see how much we got out of them since we took really good care of these guys and they should have a very high yield so we'll go ahead and get started with that so i'm going to hire a worker here they're gonna go ahead and start harvesting. One thing I do wanna talk about briefly as we're going, right now as you see here, out of the back of the combine we have that going on. So that's fine and dandy, but if you are planning to bale into straw, and we can talk about that a little bit more detail in a different video, but what I wanna talk about is if you hit the comma button if you're on PC, oh, I have to, sorry, we have to unhire the worker, so we'll pause him there. Then I'll hit the comma button on PC. Then I can rehire the worker. And now what we're going to see is going to be a straw swath. So that swath there that's being left behind by the combine, you can bale that into straw bales and make a little extra money. Um, I think it's great. It doesn't take away anything from your actual yield out of the field. So I think it's a fantastic option to make extra money. Even early on in game, if you're able to get uh, any sort of baler, it's a great way to make money. Um, you usually can get, mm, on a field this size, you probably get maybe two trailer loads of bales uh, if you're using like an auto bale or something like that. And that can get you anywhere from, depending on the price, anywhere from, you know, maybe 8,000 to 20,000 more even uh, per, per harvest. So you're getting quite a bit of money um, if you do that. So I do recommend that if you're doing that. And I'll show you here, there's three of these guys are able to leave straw swaths. So that's gonna be the wheat, the barley, and the oats, which are the first three we have here. The canola does not leave a straw swath even if you want it to, nor does the soybean. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the combine on this setting and let them leave straw swaths for the ones that are available, um, just to kind of demonstrate that a little more. So I'm gonna let them get cracking on harvesting this and then I'll be back with you after we got it done. And as you can see off in the distance there, those are gonna be our tractors and trailers that we're gonna load the harvest up on. So. I'll go ahead and put it each in a different trailer, obviously, since you can't combine them, but that way I don't have to go unload it and so we can look at it that way. All right, I'll see you then. Finally, the harvest is over. I went ahead and harvested all those crops. So right now what I'll do is I'll show you kind of the results of each one, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up this video. So for wheat, when we harvested that, again, that's one of the ones that leaves a straw swath. We got 8,309 liters of wheat off that field. Then next up in line, also leaving a straw swath, is the barley stretch that we have here. And we got the most out of the barley out of all the different crops. So we got 9,226 liters. And I actually, just before I could finish, I had to unload the combine into the trailer before I could actually finish the rest of the field. So um, and the combine has that capacity of 8,600 liters. So that does make sense. All right, and then moving on. Here we have the oats, which we got 5,401 liters. And again, this is the final crop of the five that is going to leave a straw swath if you want to. And again, the straw swaths are optional, and we'll go over them more in a detailed video about baling and 
straw and things like that. And then moving on to our next crop. Here we are with canola. We got 5,275 liters of canola off this field, which is pretty darn good, actually. And then we'll just jump on over to our final crop, soybeans. Here we are with soybeans. We got 4,091 liters of soybeans. So the least out of these, but I believe if you go into the market, this is going to be the most uh, expensive crop as well. All right, folks, this pretty much concludes our video. One final note I want to add is the soybeans here could have been planted with a regular old uh, row crop planter as well and I go over that a little bit more detail as you can see up there there's a link to my video on cedars and planters so if you can go over that that'll talk a little bit more about that and again I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I post that other video you have seen up there that's going to be about my cultivator video different ways to prepare your field for uh, a new crop or anything on it so again this has been farmer cop thank you for watching please like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell for when I post new videos I plan on posting videos hopefully every day Though it seems like with my schedule, it won't always be that way. So that's everything for now. Thanks for watching.